It was Nora who told us about the secret beach. She had heard about it from a bartender when she'd been up late at the resort bar, and once she mentioned it to the rest of us, we all knew we had to go and see it for ourselves. The directions the bartender had given her weren't great, but according to them, the beach was a couple miles away. According to them, it was a cove, just off the beaten path. They said the water was crystal clear there, and the fish liked it because there was never any people around. Supposedly, it was a great place for snorkeling amongst the untouched natural beauty of Mexico, and that was all we needed to hear to sell us on it. Mexico was meant to be a retreat, a temporary escape from the world, so we could recharge and come back refreshed. It was the first time I'd ever left Canada, and it was supposed to be magical. We were going to have the time of our lives, for the most part. We had. I didn't grow up with a lot of money, but Katarina and Nora didn't want to go without me, so they paid for almost everything. My plane ticket, my stay at the resort, and even some of the activities we did together. I couldn't put into words just how grateful I was for what they'd done. Nora's always been a kind soul, though, and although Katarina can have a bit of a temper, she's still one of the most generous people I know. Still, they went above and beyond for me, and I made an effort to get out of my shell more for their sake. I couldn't pretend as if I didn't enjoy myself either. By far, I'd say I had more fun in Mexico than I ever had in my entire life, and I was determined to relish every single moment of that trip. We headed for the second beach, close to sunset. We had a busy day before then, having left the resort to drive around Cancun. The secret beach was our plan for dinner. We'd picked up the supplies there to grill some burgers on the beach and brought our snorkeling gear and bathing suits. We'd been talking about doing a bonfire, too, if we could. And after all, it was going to be there to stop us. We parked the car on a nearby walking trail that we knew ran close to the beach. The beach itself was down a slight incline, a bit off the beaten path, but it wasn't that hard to get to. I did remember seeing a sign that I'm pretty sure read no swimming, but we figured that was just because there was no lifeguard. I mean, why would there be? Between the six of us, it didn't take long to get all of our things down to the beach and get set up. The water was crystal clear, as promised, and the pinkish horizon rising above the ocean was a breathtaking sight to see. It's an image that I never will forget. Nora had gone off to change into her swimsuit almost as soon as we'd set everything up. She looked absolutely gorgeous in the twilight. She was already beautiful enough so that I'd caught myself envying her look more than once. Her long, platinum blonde hair was cast out behind her in the wind, and her black, one-piece swimsuit accented every part of her perfectly. I remember watching her sit down on the beach and smile into the sunset, taking in the sight as if they were made just for her. Another one of our friends, Izzy, sat nearby, almost oblivious to her. His eyes were also trained on the horizon, and he furiously scribbled in his sketchbook in a desperate attempt to immortalize this moment forever. But I suppose that was typical of him. Izzy had probably spent more time sketching Mexico than he had actually enjoying it. Although this time, nobody really cared to stop him. Behind me, Katarina and Joseph set up the grill for later. Or, more accurately, Joseph set it up and Katarina supervised. She's always been what some people might describe as the mom friend. She was never aggressive, but she was fussy sometimes. And I'll admit, it was a bit funny watching her and Joseph bicker like an old married couple. As for Joseph himself, what could I say about him? He was smart, kind, handsome, funny. Some small, childish part of me actually envied the fact that it was Katarina talking to him and not me. From the corner of my eye, I caught Nora grinning at him as I stared at him. She didn't need to say a word. She never did. Instead, she just scooted over to me and playfully fanned me with her sun hat. What are you doing? I asked. Cooling you down? You look like you've got the hots, she teased. Oh, enough. You know, the longing gazes are cute and all, but you know you can always just talk to him, right? Hey, Joseph, want to grab drinks sometime? Why, yes, spending time with you would be so lovely. She was nice enough to keep her voice low, but I swatted her away anyway. She just giggled. Don't be mean. I'm just teasing. But seriously, talk to him. What's the worst that could happen? I don't know. Maybe later, okay? Later. Sure. She knew I was full of it, and gave me a playful nudge. 
you know, not to gossip, but take a look over Izzy's way. She tilted her head in his direction. Sure enough, I noticed that someone else had joined Izzy and was looking over his shoulder as he sketched. Penelope wasn't someone I knew super well. She was closer with Nora and Katerina than she was with me, although she had a boldness to her that I couldn't help but admire. She was still wearing the cutoff overalls she'd been wearing earlier that day, although with a bright orange floral shirt, and she had pulled off the look wonderfully. Her wavy dark hair had streaks of colorful dye in it. She wore an ever-present smile that was almost impossible to resist. Some days I really wished I had her confidence. I had a feeling she was going to shoot her shot today, Nora said. Looks to me like it's going well for her. Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Well, we are on a nice romantic beach with nobody around, so... Okay, okay. Maybe I'll talk to him later. A wry smile crossed Nora's lips. Well, if you're going to sit here, want to hear a joke? Oh, God. I knew where this was going. No. Okay, so this family of four walks into a talent agent's office and says, We've got an act you're going to love. Stop it. So the talent agent says... I don't do family acts, they're too cutesy, but the family is really cute and wholesome, and the dad's kind of begging him, so he decides to give it a shot. Nora, hold on, hold on. So the mom takes out some glasses and lays them in front of the kids, and the kids take out spoons and start playing a cute little song, and the dad hums and drums a little beat, and mom does backing vocals, and then the daughter starts to sing, and it's a really pretty song. She's got this beautiful voice like a classically trained singer. Stop! Then, the mom and dad start to dance, and the son and daughter serenade them. It's really entertaining, it's entrancing. The agent just looks on in awe, and the son switches instruments to the violin, adding more depth to the song, and at the end, the agent is in tears. So he says, that's beautiful, what do you call it? And the mom and dad smile and proudly say, all right, all right, I'm going. I got up to escape her dumb joke and change into my swimsuit. We call it the motherfucking shit fest serenade for- Nora called out after me with a shit-eating grin, and I just groaned before going over to Joseph. He looked over when Nora called out her so proud punchline after me and managed a sheepish smile. She did that joke, didn't she? He asked. It was tamer than usual, I replied. So, uh, how's the grill coming? I don't know. Katerina? You're in my light, she replied with a faux frustration. I think we're good, though. There's enough ice in the cooler to keep the maid good for another few hours, too, so we can relax for a bit before we eat. Nice. Well, we've still got some daylight, so who's up for a swim? As he spoke, he pulled off his shirt, and I may or may not have caught myself blushing a little. Kate? Kat? You in? Uh, yeah. Give me a sec, Katerina said. You two go on ahead. I caught her giving me a not-so-subtle wink. Thank God Joseph didn't notice it. All right, come on. He grabbed a snorkel mask off the stand and tossed it to me before grabbing one for himself. It was an invitation I couldn't really say no to. I was wearing my bathing suit under my clothes, and I shed them along the beach as I followed Joseph into the water. The temperature was nothing short of perfect. I looked back to see Katarina picking up clothes off the sand for safekeeping before going to sit down beside Nora. Penelope and Izzy were still whispering to each other and looking down into his sketchbook. For a moment, everything seemed nothing short of perfect. Joseph and I were out there in the water for a good hour or so. The bartender had been right. You didn't need to swim out far to see the colorful schools of fish swimming along the untouched reef. In the pinkish light from the setting sun, the world beneath the waves was cast into a beautiful golden glow. The fish kept their distance from us as they went about their business, almost ignorant to us as we swam above them. I stayed by Joseph's side the entire time, only servicing to marvel at the sights below us. I caught Katerina and Nora swimming nearby as well, deliberately keeping their distance from us. I knew their game, and honestly, I kind of appreciated it. I even saw Penelope out with us, although Izzy stayed on the beach his nose constantly in a sketchbook. The sky grew darker and darker until it faded into the bluish color that preceded nightfall. Looking at the shore again, I noticed that Katarina and Penelope had made their way back to the shore and were standing over the grill. I didn't see any trace of Izzy, and I figured he'd probably just decided to see what the water was like before it got too dark to swim. 
I can see Penelope in the water nearby, but not... Not him. I didn't think too heavily on it, though. Guys, burgers are on! I heard Katarina call. Come on back! Before me, Joseph raised his head out of the water and lifted his mask off. He glanced back at the horizon almost reluctantly before looking back at me. Come on, we should go. I'm getting kind of hungry, he admitted before diving back in and heading for the shore. I hung back for a moment and looked around for Nora. I spotted her a few feet away from me, lazily floating around on her back. Nora, I called. She raised a hand to wave at me. You coming? Wait a minute. Just relaxing, she said. Go ahead, I'll be right behind you. Famous last words, I teased as I swam over to her. I splashed water on her face and she squirmed before splashing me back. Fine, fine. Hold your fucking horses, why don't you? She kicked her legs and started back towards the beach. I could see Katarina standing over the smoking grill, although I didn't see any signs of Penelope. I swam for the shore, following Nora back. I had to admit, all that swimming had worked up a bit of an appetite. By the time I made it back to shore, Katarina had noticed Penelope's absence and stepped away from the grill to call for her and Izzy. What's wrong? I asked Joseph as Nora and I got out of the water. I don't know. Penelope and Izzy took off, he said. Jesus, they couldn't wait until after we ate, Nora asked. They probably just dipped out for a bit of one-on-one -on -one time. Right before we eat? I asked. Maybe that was something Penelope might do, but Izzy? Not by a long shot. They can't be far, Katarina said. Now can you guys just help me look? Joseph, can you keep an eye on the food? Yeah, sure thing, he said before going to check on the grill. Nora frowned before stepping away from me. Izzy, she called. Penelope, get your asses out here! She wandered a little further down the beach, calling out for them as she did. A weak sense of unease began to churn in my stomach. I was used to the anxious feeling. I'd, I'd felt it so many times before. Usually, it was that illogical fear of the worst possible situation that went away as soon as everything turned out alright. Which it always did. But while I was there, it was hell. Izzy! Penelope! I heard Katarina call. Come on, guys! I looked down the beach in the other direction. Watching the sand for footprints, it was impossible to tell which footprints belonged to who in the rapidly approaching night. The moon had risen to shine over the glimmering surface of the water like a midnight sun. It was the only light save for the glow from the grill. Izzy! Penel- Katarina's last call was cut off abruptly, and I heard her scream. I turned around to see Joseph and Nora both staring in the direction where she'd been standing just a moment before. Now, though, there was nothing. Just a small cloud of disturbed sand starting to settle. Cat? Nora asked, but there was no answer. Joseph stared at the settling sand, ignoring the burgers as they burn. Cat? Nora asked again, but she didn't move a muscle. What happened to her? I asked. I... I don't know. Joseph, did you see anything? No. I just heard her scream and... J Jesus, did, did something grab her? Nora didn't reply. She just stared at the patch of sand where Katarina had probably been standing. I couldn't see her face, but I knew she was putting things together. Kate? Joe, we need to get off the beach. What about Kat? What, uh, what about Izzy and Penelope? Joseph asked. I said off the beach now! Move! None of us moved. Instead, we just watched the sand beneath our feet. I could see Nora scanning the area around her, looking for something, anything out of place. I caught myself doing the exact same thing. I could see our, our previous footprints in the sand, and I could see where Izzy had been sitting before. And now that I was looking, I could see where he'd stood up and where his footprints had suddenly ended. The sand looked a little disturbed there, nothing too obvious, nothing that any of us would have looked for, but it was... It was obvious enough. Guys, I called out to the others, let's just retrace our steps, alright? Step where we've already stepped. Maybe that's safe. I could see Nora thinking it over before slowly starting to make her way back towards us. She treaded lightly, following her own footsteps back and getting closer and closer. She moved slowly, but at least... She made progress as she made it back to the grill. 
The burgers were burning and the smell of charcoal filled the air. Joseph watched her intently as she closed the distance between him and then looked at me. Kate, just stay where you are, she said. All right, we'll come to you. Let's travel together. What if something grabs one of us? Like it grabbed Cat, Joseph demanded. What if it grabs all of us? Well, what do you want to do? Scatter and get grabbed? Nora snapped. Just hold your fucking horses and walk to Kate. I could see Joseph considering arguing, but he kept his mouth shut. He went first with Nora right behind him, retracing our steps back towards the incline that we'd used to get down the beach. Joseph kept glancing at the tree line, gauging the distance between him and it. It's just a few steps away, I heard him say. Come on, we can make it. Joseph, don't, Nora warned. Just stay on the path. It's right there. I mean, come on. We, we can make it. Kate, Kate, head for the incline. We'll meet you up there. Joseph, don't. I can make it. It's right there. Joseph, no. But he wasn't listening. I mean, I understand. He was, he was scared. We were all scared. He wanted off the beach just as much as any of us. He was just... Impatient. Nora grabbed him and stopped him from making a dash towards the tree line. Maybe he would have had an easier time getting up that way than he would have if we'd gone back the way we'd came. I mean, maybe. Although he never lived to find out. The sand to his right seemed to shift. I know that Joseph saw it and he stumbled over as he tried to evade it. I saw a pair of spider-like segmented legs emerge from the sand as something smooth and solid lifted itself out of the beach. A crushing claw shot outwards, closing around Joseph faster than he could react. He barely had time to scream before he was violently dragged under whatever had surfaced beside him. In the blink of an eye, he was gone. A small cloud of sediment had been kicked up when the dormant crustacean had risen, but it settled quickly leaving nothing but a trail of footprints in the sand to indicate that Joseph had ever been there. I could see Nora watching in wide-eyed horror, frozen and unable to move. I could see her body trembling in fear. I half expected her to start running too, but no. When she next moved, it was slow and deliberate as before. I could hear her heavy breathing and her frightened sobs, I could see her body shaking as she drew nearer to me. As she approached me, she crashed into my arms, hugging me close. Kate, she gasped. Oh God, Kate. It's okay. It's okay, I lied. It's going to be okay. We'll just... We're almost home. I held her by the hand, trying to hold back my own tears. In the moonlight, it was hard to see the path we'd come in by, but we took it slow. I never thought we'd reach the incline. I never thought that we'd make it back off the beach, but somehow we did. I made Nora go first, pushing up to what we hoped was safety. She reached a hand down to pull me up after that, and after that, we couldn't have gotten to the car fast enough. We left the keys down by the beach. I, I don't know what happened to them or if anyone got them back. Instead, we spent most of the night by the side of the road, hoping to God that a passing car might pick us up. And I considered us lucky that when one did the next morning, it was another tourist like us who was nice enough to try and help. We spoke to the police. But as far as I know, they did nothing. Our friend's death were labeled as mysterious disappearances, and neither me nor Nora have known exactly what to say or do about that. We, we haven't fought it. I mean, what's the point? What exactly could we tell the families of Izzy, Penelope, Caitlin, and Joseph? Would they ever believe the truth if we told them? So I suppose that mysterious disappearance will have to suffice, but I can't go through life without telling the truth somewhere at least once. I miss my friends. I miss them every day. I know that Nora misses them too. I wish they were still here. I wish we'd never found that stupid beach. But you can't change the past. And I know I, I should consider myself lucky that I didn't meet the same fate as they did. But it's hard to count yourself lucky. when you're one of the ones that got away. Hey 
there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to tonight's story or watching tonight's video. I appreciate it. As always, I cannot thank you enough for always being here. And if you guys would like to see more or hear more, then I'd appreciate it if you click that subscribe button. Or if you're listening on the podcast, then click the follow button. You guys like words, right? I speak words. You guys hear words. Also, did you know you can read words? They put a lot of words into things called books. And I have two of those on Amazon. Mr. Creepypasta's Creepypasta Collection. Volumes 1 and Volume 2 are available now on Amazon. If you give them a search, or you could just scroll down to the description. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all you guys who support on Patreon, patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, especially Jacob Schaefer, Jay, Zach, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chase Burnett, Dan Krause, Katrina Beasel, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zane Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Ashwood, Lord of the Weebs, Miss Exandra, Mr. Unsettling Spaghetti, Eurogore, Suji Campbell, Marco Takes Dabs 420, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Robert White, Andreas Garza, Snails Burnin, Legit Quad Feed, Fried Chicken 12, James Bruce, Chris Lovin, Freddy Krueger, Ty Nanny, Justin Johnson, 1 800 Nightmare, Unknown Nobody, Michael Scarborough, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, James Lowe, Lisa Cottrell, Jimbo the Hutt, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Plater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Brian Arse, Cryptic Nightmares, Brennan Wright, Someone You Love, S-Man, Kiwi the Sloth, Liam Newman, Sky Harbor, Caleb Dougal, Nina Smith, Nico Kyle, Rafael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Talon Karlick, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for supporting me, and if you guys would like to join them on the list of people's names I mispronounce, you can always do so at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, as well as all those fine people in the description down below who help support this channel and keep the lights on and give treats to Hylas and Hercules. You guys, as always, are the real MVPs, and I love and appreciate every single one of you who support there or just support anywhere by watching and subbing. So good night, everybody and sweet dreams.